the other thing I wanted to bring up is this idea that because so much of your work is outdoors and, and landscape work, do you think it's given you a different appreciation, a stronger appreciation for the natural beauty that's here? Or are you still kind of blasé about it? Oh, big trees. Mm. Mm. You know, it, <laughs> I've met a lot of people in my travels. And the one thing that's consistent, that's from people who are visiting here and people who live here, is that this is God's country. It, and I mean, every day. We go out and do things here and it is so, I, I appreciate each day. And I've been photographing Vancouver Island for well over 20 years and I'm still finding things that I didn't know existed. And I get out, it's not as if I'm just here, I'm, I'm out on Vancouver Island, west coast, top the island, underneath the island, you know, off the southern tip, I'm central coast, all these places I get out and I, I do a lot of photography for a lot of very different things out there. Mm -hmm. I'm still surprised with what I see and what I find and what is still yet to be found. Product photography is very challenging, especially products that are shiny. So let's get some ideas on how we can better improve our photographs of things that are shiny. It's all about the lighting, there's a tip. We're here at the Little Red Church in Comox and we're going to see some photographers. And they're not doing anything boring. They're doing something really exciting. They're taking photographs of sea wind saxophones. So what's the most important thing when you're taking high quality photos of a saxophone? Uh, apparently it's lighting. You need good lighting, but not too much. You don't want shine. It's always a challenge because the light comes from different angles and it can uh, create havoc in your shot. The, ch the challenge is that these are, of course, metallic objects. They are very shiny and reflective. They, they uh, are among the most difficult uh, subject matters in, to photograph. So the challenge is to find a way to make them look good. We're going to meet Peter and Bob. Both are retired gentlemen. Peter has retired as being a sociologist a university professor in fact, and Bill has retired from working for the government. And now they are very avid hobbyist photographers. Well, this is the first time in this type of a venue. I've experimented before with bottles and things like that um, with some success, but uh, not, a, not with actually something like a saxophone, which is a bit more complex. And we've got a couple of strategies for that. One is to use reflectors and block out uh, much of the light, leaving only uh, the reflective whitish surface. Nothing that's contoured is going to get onto the instrument. So that's one approach. And the other approach we'll take is to use flash, to uh, diffused flash coming through either a soft box or being reflected back off a, an umbrella type uh, screen to brighten the object without causing a lot of harsh light on it, which you would get if you were to flash directly onto the object. I think their photographs will be three times as good as a single photographer's would be. You've got three ideas, three concepts, coming together to take a, some fabulous photos of instruments. Uh, we've worked together as a team on a number of occasions, so we, we kind of know how to, to feed off of each other and uh, learn from each other. And the important thing is you have an open mind and that uh, if someone's idea works better than yours, you go for it. Because in the end, you want a good shot. You don't want a mediocre shot. For Andrina's Picks for Shaw TV, I'm Andrina Casholti from Comox. If you look back to when you started, how the professions changed a little bit, mm -hmm. the customers that were your good customers yeah. then, are they still your same customers now? Well, uh, photography is very much a technical business. It's techni technology driven uh, and uh, it's been explosive over the years. You know, that whole idea of uh, film changing to digital was uh, the same as when artists back in the 1800s, when photography first came out and there's this cataclysmic change and there's concern and worry, everything's gonna change and things are gonna disappear. That same thing happened when digital came out. And as photographers, uh, people who are able to adapt to change, were able to take the new format, the new type of photography and run with it. People who are 
not adaptable change and re remain with film are not in the business anymore because it is a business and uh, time is money. So fit the digital allows for less expense in some ways, but more expensive in the other because your time is now on the computer. So time becomes a really important issue. In the old days, we would be in the darkroom processing, processing, uh, creating prints uh, in, using uh, light sensitive materials and, and largers. That's gone now in the business. It's still there for fine art, but in the business of photography, it's now all electronic and digital and now the computer becomes the new darkroom. And it's interesting that you bring that up because we are going to have a segment on classic photography, mm. which is what's being taught at Vanier High School. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's where the young people are learning this classic of darkroom work. Yep. We're at GP Vanier. It's interesting because we're surrounded by young people, but we're talking about something that's really quite old school and quite traditional, which is the photography class here. It's a process that you have to kind of go through and there's steps, uh, very methodical, but kind of zen-like. I'm leaving the zen of the dark room. I'm kind of amazed because a lot of our photography series has been about digital photography. And now at the high school with the young people, we are going old school to the basics, the introduction to developing film. Yeah, I love taking pictures of everything and I really like pictures because they're like moments in time just captured and you can always remember them by just looking at them. Lucy has such a lovely passion for photography. She's taken this really traditional thing of developing and she's made it her own. Ever since I was little, I've loved taking pictures with digital cameras and then um, I was, became interested when I learned about that there was um, dark room developing going on here. How it originally started, like before they came out with digital cameras, how they took pictures before that and came up with the idea and stuff. So I was interested in how it all started. So those are the negatives. I do remember yeah. back in junior high school when I was also doing photography. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember preparing my negatives, but I don't remember the steps really following that. Dave Ingram is teaching the students so much, taking it from camera work and having nice photos to developing their photos and how that process all works. It's a pretty select group actually that uh, is willing to take the time because it is a very different process than uh, shooting with your iPhone or with a digital camera. It's a completely different process. Um, I haven't actually shot a lot of film over the last say five or ten years and uh, for me back in September um, being able to pick up a camera, put in the black and white film and go out and shoot it. Um, I quickly realized that it was a very different process than what I've been doing for the last five years. Uh, kind of a good one because I slowed down quite a bit. I really had to think about the shots um, and uh, work to get a good image. That was exposed for about 30 seconds, which means it's almost a totally, like if it had been exposed any longer and it would have gone to a totally white piece of paper. Okay. And so this one is exposed for about probably 15 seconds. And um, as you can see, it's much darker because it's exposed for less time. What a retro place to be. Oh my gosh, things have changed so much in photography. At Vanier High School, we're really seeing the tradition of photography, the tradition of taking photographs using old fashioned film and then developing the film to make it yours. For Andrina's Picks, I'm Andrina Kosholti with Shaw TV. I'm gonna head back now and have some quiet in the dark room. Mark Hanley has a wonderful story on the Comox Valley Photographic Society. What a fantastic local group for amateur photographers. And we're gonna learn that, boy oh boy, they sure know their stuff. Even though digital photography is still fairly young, we've come to expect clear, brilliant photos, ones that take your breath away. But it wasn't always that way. Photography started out rough. Even 51 years ago, when the Comox Valley Camera Club was formed, photographers were still at the mercy of both the elements 
and the technology. Well, it's a pretty simple little camera. It's just a little black plastic box. No adjustments whatsoever. Uh, you are at the mercy of the elements, really, in terms of light. We all know the photographers are a dedicated lot, and they've always been keen to move along with technology as it's changed and improved their art form. I originally started with one of those little flat cameras like this that you used to put the little um, cube uh, flashes on the top, and I only went digital maybe six or seven years ago. Uh, so, uh, but I've embraced it wholeheartedly. I, I love the fact that I'm not constantly running to get film processed, waiting two weeks to see my images. Now it's instantaneous. Carrie is not alone. Digital photography has exploded and become more and more automated. And while point and shoot does rule the market today, there are still many avid photographers who use the technology to their advantage. Let's say we're trying to capture some of these moving vehicles out here on the street. Uh, it might pick a shutter speed that's too slow, and they won't be sharp. Uh, or maybe you want a slow shutter speed because you want to pan with them and create a blurry background. It, it depends on the effect you want to create. You're watching Andrina's Picks on Shaw TV from Roto's Coffee and Bistro in Courtney. The Comox Valley Photographic Society is our current feature with Mark Hanley. With technological change, the field of photography expands almost daily. And to reflect the changing nature of their hobby, the Comox Valley Camera Club, in this its 51st year, has changed its name to the Comox Valley Photographic Society. All forms of the medium are seen as part of the whole. The thought was that it's more than just the camera itself. It's the photograph, so hence photographic society, to keep the name simpler. And, and, and so we re-registered as the Comox Valley Photographic Society. Whatever the tool, it is the passion that drives these photographers in their never-ending quest to capture beauty. If you love photography in any of its forms, then you'll likely find kindred souls at the Comox Valley Photographic Society. In the Comox Valley for Shaw TV, I'm Mark Hanley. Boomer, thank you so much you're for, for doing this interview. You're welcome. It's a pleasure and hopefully your audience has gained something from it or at least enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you once again, Boomer Jarrett with Strathcona Photography for giving us your perspective on photography. For Andrina's Picks, I'm Andrina Kosholti.